Hello YouTube. Um, good to be back with uh, another feeding video. Don't know how many we're going to do today. Um, more than 20, let's put it that way. Probably closer to 30 to 40. Um, so we're going to try and do them quick and not as much talking. This is the female Davis Penelorus. Let me throw a female Red Runner in there. And she's already coming out. She's a pretty good hunter. You really can't see her yet. She's not out into that light. That roach turns around, it's going to be curtains. It's quick and easy. Uh, you didn't really get to see her that well, though. Okay, this is the female. If you watch the uh, mid-August update, uh, you'll know that the male molted. Um, we're not sure if he's mature yet because I haven't seen him out all the way. I'm going to give him a few more days um, before I feed him. Uh, we'll look at him today if he's out and I can see black fangs. We'll try and feed him today and then we'll get him rehoused. So, female Davis Penelorus. Next up is a young juvenile male, Grammastola pulchra. This is Norman. He's a good eater. Except again, when he's in primo, as most spiders, not all, because you'll still have some spiders that will eat all the way up in through a couple days or even the day of molting. Uh, GBBs are somewhat famous for that. Although mine don't. Some others, some other people's have. And I'm cleaning out the water dish here, getting out of the substrate that he put in there out. We'll give him some water. Good looking guy. Still has his beautiful gold mirror patch in the back there, which he'll have always. And he's about year and a half to two years old and about two and a half inches long. Grandma's tall pulchra, the Brazilian black. This is Mojave. This is KC Tarantula's mature male, Bonapelma calcotes. We're going to try and give him a feed and we're going to try and feed the female one more time and then we're going to do a pairing either Sunday or I may have to put it off till Wednesday, which looks like that's about the probably most logical time to do it. But we'll throw a female red runner in there and see if he's hungry. I haven't had much interaction with him, so uh, I have catch cup in hand. Again, he's in a fauna palma, so they're not really too skittish but skittish enough and being a male um, you know they like to venture clean out the water bowl while I'm watching him cower that position posture that he's in right now is the um, because the, the lid fell off kind of frightened them so they kind of pull their legs up into them to kind of defend themselves um, because if something attacks them, they can lose their legs and survive, but so their legs try to protect their carapace and abdomen when they curl up like that from a predator from above. And that's kind of why he's in that position because he was a little freaked out. He's 
is. Try and now. Uh, these little red runners aren't the easiest thing to catch with tweezers, I'm gonna tell you. Okay, here he is. We'll try and put the roach in front of him and see if he wants it, and he doesn't. So we're gonna water him up. I will leave the roach in there for the evening. Not that he really needs to eat before mating, but it may be a last meal, you never know. Okay, so he doesn't want to eat, we shall move on to others. Here is the female Fonopalma gabelli. I don't trust this spider with my life. She is one of the uh, nastier ones that I have. Not nasty in the sense of just flat out mean, but she's not. This is one that I would never attempt to handle. She's not a very good eater. She tends to want worms more than anything else, but we're gonna try her with a female red runner and see if she will come out for it. No, you're not climbing out, Roach. We're gonna head towards doom and gloom right there in front of you. This is typical behavior of her. It'll just kind of let the roach do its thing, and if I want to eat it later, I will. If not, eh, no big deal. It can, it can live with me. She had two dubia roaches in there that I thought she ate probably for about six or seven months. Um, that surfaced, and I was like, what, what are you doing with these? Well, apparently, they were roommates, and she was a little upset that I took them out. Not really, but that's the way the story goes. So there she is, a uh, really, really nice looking spider, really. I mean, there's a lot of gabelli slings in the trade right now, so they're, you know, something that I would recommend. They are a little bit more on the agitated side of a fauna pelmus than any of the other ones that I have, but uh, all in all, pretty, pretty decent spider. Always has a big ass, big abdomen, she's just always huge like that. Even right after the molt, she was big like that, so. Okay, well, we're not going to get her to eat. There's no intention but that. So we don't want her crawling out, so we're going to cover her up and move on to the next. This guy here is generally a crowd pleaser. Um, he does uh, pretty good takedowns. Usually comes out to hunt pretty quick. This is the Nandu Chromatis male. Not mature. Oh, well, he's going to go. That roach is going to have done. Over with. Yeah, you can't go in there. Anything food-wise inside that coconut's getting eaten. Uh, we had a real good um, video of him last time, of him actually coming out, and I double-fed him. Uh, I'm not going to this time. Just a regular one roach is going to be sufficient. He'll probably come out. We'll see if he does. Look at that. He's just beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. The colors are just absolutely tremendous. I would like to get another sling of this species because this one's a male um, and, and I may try to you know that deal I'm doing next week I may just throw into ten dollars and, and pick up a sling of the Nandu just uh, they grow really well um, they don't grow super fast this one's been two and a half years with us um, got them as a three-quarter inch sling uh, he's grown sufficiently um, it feeds well always he's just he's been a really good spider uh, for a nandu doesn't flick uh, but again i don't mess with them i feed them i water them i spot clean i don't generally mess with them i don't try to hold them i would never try to hold a nandu um not saying that you shouldn't i'm just saying i don't um not super defensive like most people say theirs are uh he's not a threat posture as soon as I open the lid kind of a spider <coughs> um, they have their 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 place um, I check them again usually every three days is when I get to each spider so there's a three-day cycle of, of checking them 
Um, so I would recommend this, this species highly. If you want a nice looking, beautiful leg patterns, great eater, decent grower, tremendous eater. Like I said, tremendous eater. This is a species to get. Nandus are great. Nandus, Acanthoscurias, uh, Lassiodorus. Those are the three species I would recommend highly for people that want aggressive eating spiders. Okay, we're going to uh, move on to the next, and we need to find a new catchphrase because there's so many of us tarantula keepers that when we go from spider to spider, we always say we're going to move on to the next. So I'm going to have to figure out something different than everybody else. So hopefully I can figure that out soon. This is just a check or an update. It's not going to be a feeding. This is Morris. This is the male Aponopelma hensi. Or hensi. Hensi. I like how like I said hensi. It sounds better. But sorry about moving the camera and the blurriness right there. But you could see that if you remember videos past, his abdomen did not have darkening or any kind of black in it whatsoever. It was a light tan. Now you could see the black and the darkening. Um, he has swelled tremendously. I am. Uh, he was sent to me as a penultimate male, so he should mature and get him hooked up with the female here. You know, once he hardens and does a sperm web and recovers a little bit, so I'm hoping he molts within the next couple weeks to have a late September pairing, depending on her status. Um, she's going to start to get wetted. Um, she's going to be up on top so I can get to her and the Calcodes female so that I can um, saturate them, not saturate them to the point where there's, you know, the water or the, the substrate's completely damp, but more of a stimulating rainy season so when they are paired, uh, they will drop. I, I think I may have to do that. Actually, they actually are paired, but uh, that will be coming. Um, I have to do a few little fact checks on my end to make sure that my information is perfectly correct on what I'm doing with them. Um, I have a good source uh, for Fauna Pelma breeding. Uh, Austin Spears, I can get with him. He does a lot of Fauna Pelmas and Chase Campbell. Um, they do a lot of Fauna Pelma breeding, so I can get with them to, to make sure that everything I'm doing with them is right to uh, be successful with an egg sac. So what, what we have set to pair is her it's with him, the Pensize, the Calcodes, the Cereocosmus Array. That's what I have on hand right now. Um, you saw the video of, well, I'll update that. I don't want to get into that right now, but uh, I'll explain the next pairing that I'll be doing soon too, and it's it's really exciting for me. So uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. We're going to put these guys back on the shelf and get the next round of spiders down. Okay, hopefully this girl will come out. She has been wandering quite a bit lately, which gives me the uh, I'm hungry behavior I would say you can pretty much tell with her because she actually comes out of that hide but uh, we're gonna throw a male red runner in and see if development oh, went right in there uh, it's not what we wanted definitely not what we wanted she is oh she's got it now there she is let's hope she comes out she did get it um, she was actually in the corner that is a V-shaped log at the end, so it's cut into a V. Um, let me just leaf out of here. Give her some water. She may come out, she may not. This is the Nandu Colorado Velosus. Uh, confirmed female. I would consider her probably a subadult. Probably the next molt. Uh, she'll have sclerotized spermathicae. Uh, and breedable. Um, one I may possibly venture. I don't know. They have a ton of babies, so I'm not really quite sure if it's something I want to do. If it's a friend of mine that may have a male, that may be something, but I don't think I'm going to go out and search for one. Um, you know, if it's someone like Ruth from Mostly Reptiles, and you know, she's got a male, and I can produce them and give her 75% of the babies, sell my 25% or 24%, keep 1%. That, that would be something I would be interested in doing, but nothing where I'm going to have 600 babies to try to get rid of. I don't want to do that. That's going to be bad enough with the Aponopelmas. Uh, the Calcodes, I'm going to send Mike whatever he wants as far as 
the amount. Um, and then the Aquanapelma hensies, I have a buyer already lined up for 80% of what's produced. And then I'll probably keep a couple for myself and then sell the rest of them solely or singly or in groups or whatever. So that doesn't look like she's going to come out, but uh, it's too bad she's a good looking spider. If you want to see, you know, close ups of the uh, Nandu Colorado Velosis, go and watch Marilyn Moore's video. She's got three of them, I believe, on her last feeding videos. Um, hers are out right there, bam, in your face. Uh, great, great species. Again, Nandus are good for feeding. Um, this one is a little bit more defensive, so to speak, than the male Chromatis, which generally isn't that way. Colorado Velosis are more skittish. Uh, Chromatis usually are a little bit more defensive, um, based on, you know, what I've seen and read and talked to people that have them, but she is um, not a friendly spider at all. She stays in her hide for the most part. If I do see her out, that generally means that she is looking for food. Now, with this meal, she'll probably be in her hide for the next week to 10 days and then I may see her wander out again so okay we're going to jump to the next tarantula to be fed not just going to the next one we're going to jump to no, I'm not really going to jump but I'm trying out new catchphrases so bear with me so next up is the recently molted Gramostola species mall um, not sure if she's going to eat yet or not we're going to give her a try and see I mean, look at her even after molt. Uh, typical Gramostola, Fonapelma, Brachypelma. The abdomen still are decent size after molt. So we're going to see if she's interested in this female red runner. Probably won't be, but it's worth a try. Oh, yes, she is. losing focus because I'm trying to manipulate the roach. She knows it's there. There she goes. Boy, she pretty. Now, there's a, you look at her and then you think, of course, Grandma Stola right off the bat with the striations on the leg, mirror patch in the back. Um, and then you think, well, she's reddish, which she's not. She's actually a burnt orange on her femurs here. Um, so, Concepcion, Mall. They are 150 miles apart, the two little provinces. Um, are they the same species? We don't really know. Okay, all I know is that the Concepcion's, uh, the hair is a tad bit different on the legs and the color is a little bit more vibrant. Um, she looks to me more orange than she's going to see, to look to you guys on camera. No, you stay in there. Stay in, yeah, you just turn around, do your thing. I just want, we just want to see you, that's all. There you go. Um, I probably would hold this spider. Um, she's pretty placid for the most part. Um, she has tried to crawl out a few times. I just put my hand in front of her and, it, and she goes back in. But um, I have pictures of her when I first got her and she's quite more orange. And like I said, it was kind of like a baboony orange or not baboony, no, that's a wrong, the wrong monkey, a orangutan orange. She's not that orange now. Um, she is orangish and that's why they're called the uh, orange fluff. Uh, she is very fuzzy as you can see. Uh, and a pretty good eater when she's not in, you know, a six-month stage of pre -mold. Uh She went about three to four months without eating prior to her molt. And it was the first molt with me. She is 100% female and 100% um, mature. So if I found someone that had a male Graham Stola species mole that was interested in breeding, I would definitely breed her. <coughs> uh, I like... This is probably my favorite Gramostola species. This and the Pulcher peas are probably my two favorite, and I love I love the Pulcheras too. But 
I just, I adore her. Um, when I got her, there was three of them. I sold two of them. I kept her. Um, she was the biggest of the three, uh, but not by much, only by maybe a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch. Uh, my friend, who I talk to pretty much every couple days, has one of my females. Uh, hasn't molted yet, but she said she has been rather sluggish lately, so hopefully she'll be molting for her soon, and we can definitely confirm that she's a female also. Um, I would hate to her have her... Um, well, if, if it's a male, I'm sure she'll be more than happy to send him back if he matures to breed with her. Um, but I'm hoping that she has a female too. Okay, let's uh, let's get to the next one. Um, we're going to go ahead and continue with the larger spiders. So we have the Aphonopelma calcotes female, Hensi female, uh, the Gramostola species north, and the Aphonopelma simoni. Those are the next four uh, females that need to be fed. And then they'll be good for another month, and the Calcotes will be good for her breeding. Okay, so here is Monterey, the female Bonapalma hensi. This is the girl that I found at work. Uh, she's roughly four, right around the four inch mark, maybe a tad bit over, four and a quarter. Super eater. Um, doesn't look to be in pre molt which is good because once Morris does mature and it's ready. She just molted in April of this year, so I'm hoping that she's now going to be on that one-year cycle of molting or maybe more. So she'll be able to breed. She was mature on molt, so we'll give her a female Red Runner. And see that she has completely redecorated everything in here. She has pulled the dirt out away from one side and put it on the other and then moved it back and doesn't seem to be interested in this roach at all. She has done some light webbing, which you know most terrestrials don't do a lot of webbing, especially New World species. But she's not interested. Oh yeah, she, there she goes. Oh, you missed it. She moved down. Sorry. Hold on. I was holding her lid. She did. Oop. Now we're twisting. I don't want that. There is Monterey. We're going to get her dish cleaned while she's eating, get water in it, and then uh, go to our next female. Get the light. Okay, here's Hazel. Uh, Grandma stole a species north. You can see how brown she is, gold she is. We're going to give her boom right away. She loves to eat. For Grandma Stola species, yeah, Grandma Stola species, she is a very, very good eater. We'll uh, zoom you guys in on her and she's going to move. Of course, she's going to move. When I got her, she was listed as a Port Terry. Well, as a rose hair. When I got her at first, we thought, oh, Port Terry. Um, when she molted, I was like, okay, she doesn't look Port Terry to me. She's not really grayish. She doesn't have a lot of pink on her carapace. She was really, really brown with a gold sheen, really, really gold throughout. You could see the gold shimmer on her abdomen there more on you know her urticating patch but even on the rest of her abdomen she had a lot of gold um, so i sent a picture to uh, one of my friends on awesome arachnids uk alan donald he's a big uh, grandma stola species keeper um, he had his guesses and uh, then we had arden oh gosh I, I went, no I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna forget his name now and i shouldn't the owner of the spider shop in in uk um, he confirmed to me uh, with my pictures that without hesitation it was Graham Stola species north. It has something to do with a black line on the chalerse going down to the fangs. That was the telltale sign for him. But uh, she's a great, great spider. Uh, was a little 
crazy before. Um, and she's another one that honestly, she could probably deal with only half the size of this enclosure. You know, one of those stair like uh, shoe boxes, the seven inches, she could probably be perfectly fine in that because she doesn't really wander too much, you know, with her hide and then just dirt and a, and a, and a water dish and she would be perfectly fine. Same thing with the Grandma Stola species mall. She could probably go into something smaller. So what my plan is, is these containers, uh, they're not huge. Um, they're not super small either. Um, these are things that I want to keep for like the Acanthus curia gina colada. Uh, if one of the Grandma Stola pulcropies pul gets female and they get big, the Haitian brown bird eaters, the, the Formicopus um, cancerides. Um, there's a handful of other ones that I have that can get rather large. The Pamphibedius platyoma, um, they will be in these for the time being until we move and have more space and I can get them something bigger or longer. Um, but what I plan on doing is moving these ones into these. There's, they're a tad bit shorter, so that'll give me one more of these containers I can stack on my dresser. Um, and that, to me, is really important. The, the, the height difference isn't that much, and they're terrestrial, so the height isn't a big deal. Um, she doesn't dig. A couple of the other ones that I have in these don't dig. The Aponte Palmasimani, that's another story. She likes to dig, so I have to make sure that whatever she's in, she's got dirt to do her thing in. But uh, to move these down into some smaller enclosures to get one more enclosure up on that dresser, um, is, is really a premium for me and I want to get all this done by winter so that everybody's in their winter home and I don't have to move anybody all winter long uh, maybe a couple slings but hopefully none of these these bigger adults um, but we'll decide what we're going to do soon uh, it's not anything I need to do right now so we're going to jump to uh, I think the Aplana Pelma Calcotes is next on the list okay so here is Celine the Aplana Pelma Calcotes this is the female that we'll be breeding with the male, she's actually smaller than he is. Um, has not molted in my care. Um, she should be plenty big enough, old enough to mate. So we're going to try and make sure that she's fed. So the feeding response is gone when he comes into her enclosure. Um, where she's at is not really where I want her to be. It's not really going to be good for her to feed. Let's see. We can get her to turn around. We see it just lightly tap her on the legs and she's very cooperative. Um, and we'll go ahead and throw the roach and it goes into her little bark hide here. That walked right past her and she didn't even, she didn't flinch. She's really a really good eater for the most part. I'm surprised. I have not ever had her not eat. This is actually the first time, and this is what I was worried about. Is her not wanting to eat because she's getting ready to go into a molt situation? And then her end up, if I try breeding her, she's either A, going to not let him do his thing because she knows she's going into pre-molt or she will she will actually breed and mold out of it now that i'm looking at this is not what i wanted to see really now her abdomen is not really any darker shinier than normal it's her normal dark but she's not interested in this at all Not one bit. So, we'll, I don't know. I'm going to give her a bunch of water. And uh, we'll, we're going to go ahead and go on with the uh, breeding in the next four to five days. That's probably going to have to be a bathtub issue. Uh, because once they are, if they do breed and she does want to attack him afterwards, he needs to run. 
I don't want him running in here because he'll have too many places he'll just run and take off and I won't be able to catch him especially if you have two going separate ways in the tub at least they're going separate ways in the tub okay uh, we're going to try the Afonapalma Simoni and that's probably going to be it for part one uh, it's just Again, if you go to two to three minutes per spider and you have 15 spiders, then you already have a 45 minute video. So um, I didn't, I don't want to do them that long. So I may break these up. So if this isn't the end of part one, part one may have ended a couple spiders ago. Uh, if it isn't, then this is part two. We'll find out when I do uh, the, the condensing. Juana Palma Simoni, suspected female, haven't had a successful mold that was flexible yet still looks pretty vibrant on the front end but she is starting to dull and of course why would we not want the roach to go down inside the cave well it's just where'd you go you stupid roach I don't want to lift this up because it'll take she'll take off He's in there somewhere. I just can't see him. Okay, well, you at least get a good look at her. Maybe she'll go in there and find it. Yep, yep, there's the roaches at the top of her bark there. Let's see if I can get the damn thing to, uh... she get it? She sure acted like she did. Let's see if she turns around. Yeah, she got it. Yeah, she's not going to turn around. She's just going to go deeper down in. She has been eating well now. She went through a long period of time where she didn't eat. Or she wouldn't eat at all. So I thought she was in pre-molt. And then, boom, one time she decided she was going to eat. And she's fed every time since. So that's going to conclude part one. Unfortunately, I have to do these in parts. I need to be a little bit more organized with how I'm going to do them in parts and try to keep them consistent. Well, you know, with the same group of spiders, roughly, again, I can't feed them all the same schedule, so I guess that really can't realistically happen. But uh, thanks for watching part one, and look forward to part two.